Hi, I'm Vince Staley, Executive Director of Media Impact Funders. Thanks for listening to our intermission spotlight with Nicole Salazar, producer and director of the powerful PBS documentary series, Philly DA. Ever since we first saw this project, which premiered at the, this year's Sundance Film Festival, we wanted to learn more about how it was made. So let's look at the trailer for the series and then we'll be back to chat with Nicole. I rejected a long time ago that the only purpose of the criminal justice system is to punish. Voters in Philadelphia have chosen a progressive as their new district attorney. The most stunning upset. Sending political shockwaves across the country. I am a career civil rights lawyer, the only attorney in the history of this city to overturn 800 convictions by corrupt police officers. Krasner is a hero to some and a bum to others. He's never been pro-law enforcement. If things aren't working from the inside, you need to bring someone from the outside. What do you think he's trying to accomplish? Anarchy. At this point, there are more people of color in prison or on parole than in slavery at the end of the Civil War. Larry is bringing in criminologists, activists. Everything we do, steady fire, heavy resistance. This will be controversial. Policies that focus on rehabilitation and second chances as opposed to punishment. We're in Philadelphia and there's murders and robberies. Community service is maybe not appropriate. This DA's office has been too close and too cozy with the fraternal order of police. How corrupt do you think the city is? Anybody who's dealt with this office knows there are secrets. We need to find out where the secrets are. You gotta be kidding me. What is it? All about police officers. There has not been prosecution of police misconduct by this DA's office for 30 years. Right now, Philly police officers think the scales are suddenly weighed down in favor of criminals. If you're too corrupt to testify in court, you're too corrupt to patrol the streets. Who was DA when there were dozens of people shot over the weekend? I was. We're tired, and we want our neighborhood back. When you try to make the right decisions, I'll live with the rest. This is a meaningless, endless cycle. A cycle of trauma, a cycle of pain. Some of the effects can be irreversible. There's no mass incarceration. That's utterly ridiculous. Not one cop is going to tell you that he's on our team. Well, I suggest you don't shoot unarmed people in the back. The DA's office is not a place a social experiment should be conducted. You don't have to destroy the system to get the results you want. Wow. So it's such a great reminder. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for making time to speak with us. And uh, what a powerful and visceral film you guys have created. Um, you working with your colleagues. Uh, what led you and your colleagues to pursue this story? And when did you first embark on this epic journey? Hi, Vince. Well, thank you for, uh, thank you for inviting me to have this conversation. It's great to be with you. Uh, so really the, you know, the, the project originated back in 2017 in Philadelphia when Larry Krasner announced that he was going to be running for district attorney. And this just, um, so you all know, this was before I joined the project. This was, you know, the primary directors on the film, Ted Pass and then Yoni Brook, who were both from Philadelphia, were in Philadelphia at the time. Um, and, you know, Ted has a long, you know, he, he goes back in activist circles in Philadelphia for a long time. So he knew about Larry Krasner as you know, the, the civil rights attorney whose number you would write on your arm when you were going to a protest in case you got arrested. That's who Larry was. He was the, you know, the lawyer with the ponytail who had sued the police over 75 times um, in different civil rights, you know, and, and misconduct cases. So he was sort of the last person anybody would have ever imagined would become the district attorney. Um, you know, the, the Philadelphia district attorney's office in particular had a very sort of punitive and um, just kind of harsh reputation. Mm -hmm. And that's who they were. And that was not who Larry was. So I think as soon as, you know, as soon as Ted heard that that was happening, that Larry was actually going to try and, you know, step into this office, you know, that just automatically seemed like an interesting story. Um, so he, he began sort of following the campaign, just, you know, thinking it might be something like a stunt campaign. It's just going to be sort of, you know, maybe a short movie that's interesting and mm -hmm. gets a dialogue going, but doesn't really go anywhere. Um, 
But then, you know, Larry won the primary and then suddenly, you know, in, in a dominantly democratic city, you know, yeah. that, that put him in a pretty good Pretty position. good odds. Yeah. So at that point, you know, he, you know, Yoni had joined Ted at that point. And, you know, once Larry actually won the election, I think they kind of just said to him, like, look, this is this is actually what the story is. It's not so much. I mean, it's amazing that you won the campaign and that's exciting, but it's really, you know, what are you going to be able to do now that you step into the office? Like, this is the story. Um, and Larry being Larry, you know, he was he was either clever enough or like reckless enough to say, OK, like you can you know, you can continue on this journey with me for now. Like, we'll see how it goes. Right. So, yeah. So Let's talk a little started. more about that. But since you mentioned um, it's kind of an unusual project in that you have three producers, directors, you're all three of you are producers, directors. And I think you bring a background in journalism to it and they have different roles that they've played in, in their work beforehand. I wonder if you could just say who your partners were on this and what each of you brought to it. Sure. Um, I mean, my partners on this were Ted Passan and Yoni Brook. Um, Ted, they're both, you know, independent filmmakers, um, artists. Yoni is also a very accomplished cinematographer. Um, you know, the three of us all sort of are able to wear different hats between shooting, recording sound, you know, doing a bit of the technical and also the production and directing work. Um, and that's really helpful on a small project like this because, I mean, even though it, you know, it ended up being an eight-part series, it really was for a long time just the two of them and then the three of us just sort of trying to make things work by ourselves and following a lot of different things and just kind of running around a lot um yeah. so it's very good to sort of have a you know have everybody sort of have a mix of skills and be able to to take each other's spot when needed um so i do come from a bit more of a of a, a news documentary background mm -hmm. even right. though i've done a little bit of verite work but that definitely you know brought me brought me in with certain kinds of questions and certain you know a more I was more familiar with sort of the accountability relationship with people in power, such as Larry. I wasn't so used to having them be the protagonist of anything that I was making. Right. Um, and Ted and Yoni both, you know, are incredible story makers, uh, incredibly talented. And I think they, you know, Ted, Ted definitely came with like also a sense of, um, of you know, we have to make we have to make this watchable. Like we want people yeah. to really care about this story. So it, you know, there's going to be dramatic. hard moments. There have to be serious moments, but you also have to feel lighthearted at times. Um, so they, you know, they both brought their artistry and their, their vision to this. And I think, I think hopefully the mix of, of all of our perspectives. Yeah, I think it's, it's fascinating to, to see those, all those different elements and your different skill sets to, to create that. And you had incredible access and seem to have shot a vast amount of footage. How did you obtain that level of access and, and manage the filming of so many intimate and emotionally fraught events um in homes and offices how did you get it and do it yeah well it's i mean it's a process i mean with larry you know he he uh agreed to sort of let us in the building right the, the da's office is you know 18 floors filled with hundreds of lawyers hundreds of staff um but he couldn't do anything in terms of you know having other people agree to go on camera every everybody who we approached who was in the office or outside of the office those were all one-on-one -on -one conversations one-on-one -on -one relationships that we made um and you know it's even though we did have a lot of shoot days i think at the end there were you know 500 plus shoot days and hundreds of hours of footage oh. it really it really is kind of only the tip of the iceberg because you spend so many hours just kind of lingering in hallways or you know, sure. lingering outside the, the police department so you can maybe get a conversation with the commissioner. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of work you put into it just to sort of have those conversations and, and get people familiar with you and explain to them what you're trying to do and, you know, ask them if they'll share, share their perspective. And you just kind of do that somewhat relentlessly. And eventually some people agree to, to talk to you. Yeah, um, it's an amazing commitment. And uh, it's a it's a whole world, so it's hard to imagine uh, what one thing you could say. But what is the most important insight uh, to take away from this project, from your perspective? Yeah, I mean it's it's a wonderful question, and I I you know it, it makes me think about different different kinds of things all the time. Um, but I think for me, it's it's just kind of really accepting that change is uncomfortable. You know, there's no. There's no scenario in which everybody's happy, everybody's going along, and it's mm -hmm. uncomfortable for the institutions and it's uncomfortable for institutions for individuals. Yeah. Um, and I think kind of remembering that can kind of also, you know, uh, give you give you a stiffer spine when you need it. 
but also give you some more compassion because you know none of us like none of us like to change. Um, so if it's somebody else trying to get you to change or you wanting somebody else to change, like you know, it's it's good to have compassion, but then also keep your focus. So yeah. Well, that's I, a I think that's great message for this session and for all of the discussions we're having in the, in the middle of this journalism funders gathering that we're doing now. But um, we don't have a lot of time for today's discussion, but we're going to return to the subject on November 17th with a more complete discussion of the filmmakers along with voices of the funders and subjects um, from the film. Uh, so please stay tuned, folks, uh, for more details on that program. And in the meantime, uh, Nicole, where can people see Philly DA now and in the near future? Yes, thanks for the question. Uh, right now it's on topic.com streaming and mm -hmm. in about a week, it's gonna be back on uh, the PBS Passport app online. Okay, great. And if people are eager to see it, uh, Topic I think has a, a one week free uh, you know trial period so you can watch it and uh, use that platform that way. So thanks, Nicole, and we'll uh, look forward to a deeper discussion soon. Thank you so Thank much. You. Take care.